Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a treat to special for you. I've got a brand new backlight kit that looks exactly the same as some other backlight kits that I just did. It came with a Zelda sticker. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Make sure there's nothing left in the bag this time. Alright. So with this backlight kit generously provided to me from Retro Game Repair Shop, um, we've got a glass screen lens. The Q5 LCD. It's, by the way, I've been calling this a Q5 LCD because this LCD itself, there is the uh, model number, if you can read that. It's probably way too reflective. Focus on the paper. Nope, that's not going to happen. Um, I call this a Q5 LCD because it's out of the BlackBerry Q5. It's just the easy way to keep track of it. Anyway, lens, LCD, adhesive gasket, insulation film, wire, and then the uh, kit itself, the uh, conversion, the brain, if you were, if, if you will, excuse me. And um, so these two parts are identical to previous backlight kits, but you might notice I've got this weird lens here and this weird ribbon cable on here. Well, that's because this kit is for one of these weird um, Nintendo Game Boy Colors. I, I think it's foreign. Um, I don't know. I, I keep running into these weird Game Boy Colors that, that don't... I, I, I don't know what's up with them, but they look funny. And uh, I don't know. My, my games, my games don't fit. How can I play Pokemon? Um, but anyway, jokes aside, for those that are unaware what the heck this is, this is a um, Neo Geo Pocket Color made by SNK, that SNK. Um, if you're familiar with arcades, you've probably played some of their games, like Fatal Fury. But, uh... Oh, apparently it doesn't have a battery in it. That's cool. So, these consoles technically take three batteries. Besides the two AA's, there's supposed to be a uh, CR 2025 or 2032 or something in here that holds the settings and the time and the date. But I'm not going to bother because I'm about to take it apart and it's going to reset it anyway. But what's cool about these consoles is this game console is uh, most similar to a Game Boy Color in terms of actual hardware capability and uh, you know how the games play and whatnot. But the biggest difference being it has that Game Boy Advance uh, landscape layout and this very fun to play with clicky stick. Um, unfortunately, these things sold like garbage and uh, there really aren't that many games for them. But I, I can't play this and talk at the same time. Um, it's a ridiculously cool console. Don't get me wrong, but if you're buying it to play cool games, well, you're in for disappointment. But, uh, I don't know. As, as we take this apart, I'm sure you'll spot some similarities. But, uh, oh, that's right. I fix it. Come on. We've, we've had this discussion. Not that you actually listened to me. I was probably with this exact same freaking console, too. Um, I fix it screwdrivers don't 
work on this because the screws are entirely too recessed. But one of the cool things with these consoles, another one of the cool things with these consoles is the battery life. These things get stupid good battery life. Something like 40 hours out of a pair of AA's. Yet another screwdriver. Uh, that looks like a screwdriver that might work. Ooh, it feels like one too. So these consoles have three JIS screws on the right side, another two JIS screws on the left side and then a tri-point screw in that hole there because fuck you that's why um, I don't know I guess it was much cheaper to use regular screws for most of the console but then still have your one um, tamper proof quote unquote screw Oh, that's what I was afraid of. This shell was broken. I did try and glue it back together. But, unfortunately, it did not survive disassembly. But that's okay. And you'll see why shortly. I'm going to set this aside for now. We're just going to pull the whole console out of here. And uh, technically this mod that we're doing is solder free, but the speakers in Neo Geo Pocket consoles I have found are almost always glued into the shell so you have to desolder it to get this thing out anyway. I suppose with enough tugging, it might just come out anyway. Alright, well let's unplug the screen. Flip it around, you can maneuver it. Ah, it's not glued, there's little tabs. I see. I've never bothered, I've always just desoldered it. It always seemed easier at the time. Just goes to show you how much I take these things apart. Alright, we're gonna pop this screen out of here. Same way as a Game Boy. Just get the old twist routine. And you get a screen that looks remarkably like the one in the Game Boy Color. Interesting how that works. Um, remember I made that comparison to the Game Boy Color earlier? Yeah, it's because this screen was made by Sharp as well. Is it actually branded? I think some of them are, but this one isn't. Eh, it might not be. I'd say somewhere in the glass itself. Oh well, moot point. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Um, let us get some benchmarks because we are going to. Uh, well, we're going to do a bag like. Um, I can't use this adapter today. We got to go straight USB C. on account of my phone battery being low, so I have it plugged into my phone instead. 
So we'll do the test with no game. And we will God, I keep, like, going back on that decision. Like, is that the right one? Is that the right one? Okay. So we're testing at 2.4 volts. On the select language screen, this thing pulls a whopping 35 to 54 milliamps which is absolutely nothing. Oop, jumped all the way up to 64 for a second. 35 to 64. Cool, cool, cool. Now, set this aside, save it for a rainy day. check it is pins down Hold it ever so slightly to not hit those touch sensors. Comes on, and we are pulling 194 to 236 milliamps. So, four times as much. Nice. That is brightness. I think we might be better off to test this later. Um, brightness at the minimum level. We have 193 to 222 to 222. 189 to 222. And we have 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or was that ten? That was probably ten. Ten levels. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So I see lows of 252, 249 rather, highs of 282. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, this is one of the OSD kits which means it does have an on-screen display as long as we wire this thing up so we can change the position of the, shift the image around on the LCD in case it's not perfectly centered within the housing, um, enable a battery display, um, probably more, it's my new. going to disconnect this for now and set that over there because this isn't the only cool toy we're playing with today. I would say we, but it's really just me, isn't it? I've also got one of these brand new Neo Geo pocket shells. Which is why I wasn't really that concerned when I cracked this one taking it apart. Well, it was already cracked. 
to clarify. I'm going to have to find that. Just the battery cover, new sticker, which is great because mine's missing one. New buttons, new serial number. Oh, I have mixed feelings on that, but mine didn't have a serial number, so all right. And a whole shitload of screws. Glass lens. Oh, so we get two glass lenses. One that came with the shell and one that came with the uh, kit. They are both spaced the same, it appears. So it really doesn't matter which one you use. Use whichever one you think looks better. But I guess let's go ahead and get started on trimming this because unfortunately this is not drop in. If we take a look at the LCD here, there's these ribs up at the top that have to be trimmed off. And this whole thing down here needs to be trimmed off. So to avoid, since this is a clear shell, it's probably not going to be seen since it's mostly behind the lens, but just to try and give myself a fighting chance, I am actually going to do this one on my Dremel. I have done plenty of other mods where I've cut this up with just flush cutters and uh, knoif, but I think this one warrants the Dremel. So let me show you. I am cutting off <gasps> my Sharpie. There it goes. Parts marked in black are all getting cut. I will be back in just a moment with a trimmed shell. All right, so I had a small accident with the Dremel, and let's just say you're gonna have to call me Stumpy from now on. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, I accidentally took off a little bit too much on this wall, but it shouldn't make a difference, and it's all gonna be hidden by the lens anyway. Um, that came out way cleaner than I could have done with hand tools. So I am very pleased with that. So next step is going to be um, the adhesive that they give to this stuff here. Uh, and unfortunately it is directional. We have thick si thickest side, thinnest side. It looks like the thickest side goes on, it goes like this, with the thickest part on top and the thinnest side on the left here. All right, come on, come on. whole time I was cutting you didn't want to talk to me now you're hitting up my discord huh been much easier to do the thing I normally do which is leave the center in because that would have allowed me to use the center to keep this thing in shape until I had it in position but good enough I'm going to not peel that off just yet because we are going to do a test fit first like usual Oh, 
I'll just make my life that much more difficult when I need to do the proper install. But there we go. It really doesn't matter too much the position of the LCD itself because you can always adjust it after the fact through the uh, menu. So the key factor is that it is installed straight. I would try lining it up on this edge. Just make sure that you get this wall trimmed down completely down here and then use this edge for alignment. Um, not this one, not the top, and then there's nothing on bottom to align it. So just, just to make sure that you have your, uh, your thing in straight. But it doesn't make too big of a difference because it's not actually installed yet. Um, or it's not stepped down. I'm going to use a bit of tape. Yeah. I think we'll just have to trust that it isn't going anywhere. Again, the tape is just while I get this installed and make sure the positioning of everything is correct. Attach this insulating film to the metal surface on the back of the screen. I really don't think this is metal. Or, I mean, I know it's not, but I really don't think it's conductive. All right, conductive. <sighs> this wasn't tight enough, there we go. It's not conductive. This copper part is, but this isn't. No, oh, but I suppose that does overlap with the PCB. Okay, okay. This one goes on this. I'm just going to fold these down and out of the way for the time being, because like I said, I'm pulling this apart in just a minute. Let's try the new buttons. I can at least put buttons in. In there, I'm going to fold that down. To speak it into hole. Okay, I guess the short screws are for the inside. Yeah, 
every hole that you're supposed to install a screw on the motherboard does have a little screw icon. There's only three if I recall correctly though. Yeah, I don't see any others. So, I don't know why they give you that. Oh, the, these four must be for the shielding. Oh, we have to transfer over. We have to move this part. I'm going to mute that. Bear with me, I'm just pulling these screws out real quick. way not to lose them is to put them back where you found them or something like that I would have liked the uh, smoke colored shell instead of the full clear. This is usually the aesthetic I uh, go for. Unfortunately, they were out of stock at the time. Way too tight for uh, how you need to open it. I might 3D print a tool to not chew that up. My silver one is already chewed up, so I don't care so much about that. It probably fits a coin, but who has those? No, I'm kidding. I know it fits a coin. But still, I don't want it to get chewed up. I suppose an option, since I have access to the inside, is to try spinning it from both sides. Uh, but yeah, that's not going to happen. Okay, whatever. Get on with it. No shoulder buttons to worry about. Oh, this is so much, so much fun with this screwdriver. I'm going to have to buy a set, a set of standalone JIS drivers like this. I'm not looking forward to it. At 
least I can do the last one. Right. doesn't fit nearly as well as I was hoping it would. It's not bulging out, but it felt like it was. I don't want to put this on because I'm going to have to pull it off in just a second. I'm going to take this apart again. But, uh... Yeah, we're definitely going to have to adjust that that is very off, which means we'll need to solder it up. I'm digging this, this lens. Let's use this one. So yeah, let's take this apart so we can wire up the uh, brightness controls. One moment, please. Alright. Get that out of here. Oh, I broke it. I broke it. Pushed a little bit too hard and it broke. Alright, so I'm just going to say screw it. Stick this thing down. I need to pull that out first. I can't get that up because there's film on it. That is married now. It is not coming out if I want it to. Alright, so in the meantime, let us do up the button controls. Pull up my cheat sheet, because I don't actually know this one by heart. actually pretty easy. Um, say what you will, but if we're having button controls, I see no point in having touch sensors, so out they come. Are you heated up yet? Yes. There we go. And I'm just going to tin those joints because I can't stand Looking at them crappy joints. I'm 
Okay. And might as well do battery while we're here. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate that they include wire. And not only do they include wire, but it's already like stripped and tinned for you. But it's just way too long. You don't need that much conductor exposed. Oh, it's not even in my door. You can do that with less than half. So we'll trim them down. happy with how my soldering is going tonight. But there's an easy fix. Just add more solder. Soldered, no, nope, that gets soldered on the other side. So we will do the battery wire first. This one. Which gets soldered too. This MBT pin all the way in the lower left. Soldering iron stand likes to come with the soldering iron sometimes. It's very frustrating. Alright, it's one down. And then the other three go right here. Alright, so let's grab. BA select. I'm trying to keep them in order. Okay, we'll just do one at a time. B. Oh man. I thought that was going to be difficult. 
the board is literally labeled A, B, and then uh, option, which is what select is on these weird things. But I am shortening these wires. B. Here's A. Do the exact same thing. I meant solder it in the same place. I didn't even mean grab it too short. I'm going to have to grab it again. And then last wire by process of elimination. And we're all done. Actually, no. We're cleaning up that soldering while we're here. We. I keep saying we. Even though I'm the one doing all the work. Cool, cool, cool. Tall. Oh. <laughs> uh, whoops. <laughs> that confused the crap out of me. These wires I want to be routed under the screen just for the sake of um, appearances.
Alright, I'm going to tuck these speaker wires in. Just so I don't flatten them. Again. That red one has seen better days. Still intact though. Just not happy. Alright, I think this wire needs to not go there. Let's find out. Actually, that wire is perfectly fine where it is. Oh, of course they're not magnetic. Alright, bear with me again. I gotta go screw this thing. You know what's fun? When you're going to screw this thing together and you finish, you put the battery compartment screws in last and then it falls in that hole right there. And then you have to take the whole friggin' thing apart again. That didn't happen to me right now, but it has happened to me. I don't... I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, that's... that's an annoying button combo, but... I guess it is what it is. Uh... Nope. I'm used to Game Boys being the other way around. The position... We're almost maxed out. And this poor thing is going nuts. Turn on that pixel grid that you guys like so much. Battery display is on, which does appear to work on this console. That's nice. Didn't work on the last one I tried. Batteries are in here. Chargeable nickel metal hydride. And then you can adjust the colors. You can add like a filter, I guess. Take all the red out. But, there you go. So, pop that in there. See what game I have on the Flash Master. Oh, actually, before that, I can't believe, I can't believe I almost forgot. And these stickers look legit. Love it or hate it. Is what it is. Oh, I have the wrong battery cover on this. What the hell am I doing? Yeah, see that doesn't fit quite nicely. Kinda of disappointed in that. Oh, did it not? Ooh, that's awkward. Hello?
There it goes. Just had to power cycle it. Let's kill the lights, huh? Oh, wow, metal slug. Who would have guessed? Buttons. Not sure I, I like how they feel. I, I think I would have... Could have kept the old ones. Better color, too, I think. I mean, I still can. It's not like they're going anywhere. This is really not the best um, game to test this with, with all the frame dropping. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's try something else, huh? I also have one of these before they rebranded. Uh oh, there it goes again. Is it the cart? Nope. Well, that's disappointing. It did work. It could be the batteries. It shouldn't be. It could be. Let's try. The rechargeable nickel metal hydroid ones. Maybe it was just batteries. have any good games on here for um, testing this out I don't think and I don't think there are any like um, test ROMs for new Geo Pocket Color I will say I've seen no um, frame drops though or tearing as I've come to expect so far in that, I mean, it's performing well, as expected. Oh no! Oh, sh shoot. That's okay. The, the controls on this thing don't really suit the game I'm playing. I mean, it's fine, but... I think very few people buy a Neo Geo to play Puyo Pop. Much better with games like Metal Slug. Um, what was that other game I was playing? Fatal Fury. Oh, I win! Wow, look at that! Oh. 
Of course, I'm not actually like in the middle of any games on this thing at the moment. Because, you know, it wasn't backlit before. And before this new kit, this was the backlight of uh, choice. I think my backlight and my backlight stopped working. I can see the touch sensor, it's right there. Hmm. Well, you can see how big that screen is compared to this one. I don't know what happened, I haven't had this thing apart. But, um, if nothing else, we can compare OEM versus the aftermarket shells. And this is the wrong lens color on this one. But if you're looking out and you're worried you might be getting a reshelled Neo Geo, um, aside from the battery cover not really satisfactorily clicking in there, um, the shell itself is actually pretty good. But uh, the color, it is a little bit lighter, but you'd never notice that unless the two were side by side. The buttons, look out for the buttons. As far as I know, this color shell only came with these color buttons, these light blue buttons. But that's, that's all I got as far as telling them apart. The molding matches extraordinarily close. Ah, here we go. If you look at the ABS molding on the inside, it's much more pronounced on the OEM shell. Additionally, if you look at the text on the um, battery here, you can see it's much deeper on the OEM shell as well. I'm gonna have to like take a picture and post it later. But the text is a giveaway. Otherwise it's really good. Yeah, I guess I'm starting a game. Match of the Millennium. Look, another fighting game. Who'd guess that's what would be on uh, this console? Anyway, just look at how good that screen looks. I am very satisfied. Unfortunately, the battery life is going to take a hit, but when the alternative is this, which actually in hindsight it could be the batteries because just put the batteries that were in here and here. Um, when the alternative is this teeny tiny screen or sending your console to Vietnam and then paying $150, not counting shipping, uh, to get a screen mod of unknown quality installed, then, uh, you know, you'd be, you do you, I guess, if that's what you're into. Yeah, still nothing. I'll have to look into that later. Or not. I don't know. Probably not. Why would I care about this one when I have this one now? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I will go ahead and throw a link in the description to where you can grab one of these kits if you would like to do so. Um, as well as this shell here, which I am actually very pleased with the quality on. Um, I mean, it, it, it could be better. Uh, especially when it comes to the battery cover, but the alternative is the fuck all. So I mean, complaining is kind of silly, I guess. Um, but I'm I'm really happy with it. Uh, like the Wonder Swan color shells, though the Neo Geo Pocket Color is a much more niche console, uh, so the demand is quite a bit lower and. 
but unfortunately that means lower batch sizes when uh, Cloud Game Shop got these shells manufactured. Um, lower batch sizes means mm, higher price. So the shells are kind of pricey, but if you're into Neo Geo Pocket Color and you had one that literally had a broken shell like I did, um, you know, this. I think we can all agree that this was not the cleanest Neo Geo Pocket Color. And, uh, you know, you want to reshell it, that's certainly an option. Um, if you're thinking about getting into Neo Geo, don't. The, the consoles are expensive, the mods are expensive, the games are even more expensive, all 96 of them, um, which sounds like a lot, but it's it's really not when you consider that the Game Boy has thousands. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're already into the Wonder Swan ecosystem, though, I absolutely recommend this backlight kit and, uh, and even the show. Hell. But... I mean, if, if yours is already pretty clean and in good condition, don't bother reshelling it, I think. But, you know, maybe you don't want to cut up your OEM shell for this mod, which personally I see no problems with at this point. But you do you, right? Keep on keeping on. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic evening.